A blueprint is used by people in order for them to know what is the plan in order to create a certain structure. This blueprint is important because it gives the full details of whatever is needed to be constructed. Our body also has what we call a blueprint of our identity. This is the focus of the last video in this mini-series which is entitled Nucleic Acids. Nucleic acids might be different from the previous three amino acids because nucleic acids cannot be a source of energy. Nucleic acids exist in order to do two important things, which are to store genetic information to an organism and for protein synthesis. Remember that proteins can be created by linking amino acids. And how do our body identify what amino acids to be linked? It is the job of the nucleic acids. Nucleic acid is a biomolecule that is made from the linkage between several nucleotides, which are linked together via phosphodiester bonds. DNA and RNA are two examples of nucleic acids. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acids, while RNA stands for ribonucleic acids. DNA is used to store and transmit genetic information, while RNA is used to transport genetic codes in creating proteins. Lastly, the structure of a DNA is a double-stranded helix, while RNA is a single-stranded helix. Nucleotide is the monomer for nucleic acids because nucleotides are the building blocks in creating nucleic acids. This nucleotide is composed of three major parts, which are the phosphate group, a pentose sugar, and a nitrogenous base. The phosphate group in a nucleotide is similar to the phosphate group found in phospholipids. Now the sugar in a nucleotide is composed of a five-sided ring and it differs depending on the type of nucleic acids. For RNA, you have the ribose as its pentose sugar, while for DNA, you have the deoxyribose as its pentose sugar. Additionally, the identity of the nucleotide also depends on what is the attached nitrogenous base on it. There are five types of nitrogenous bases found in nucleotides. You have the adenine, guanine, cytosine, which are all present in both DNA and RNA. And you have the thymine, which is only found in DNA, and its counterpart in RNA is the uracil. Notice how these bases differ from one another. We can actually group them into two. Can you figure out what are the two classifications of these bases? The first type of these bases is what we call the pyrimidines. Pyrimidines are nitrogenous bases which has a single ring, which includes the cytosine, uracil, and thymine. On the other hand, purines are bases which contain two rings, which includes adenine and guanine. The process of combining nucleotides is again similar to the previous biomolecules, which is via condensation reaction, the removal of water. Now the question is, where will the water come from? One of the hydroxyl from the pentose sugar of one of the nucleotides will be removed, while the hydrogen will come from the phosphate group from the other nucleotide. After we remove those two substances in their respective molecules, water will be expelled, leaving behind the carbon in the pentose sugar missing one bond while the oxygen from the pentose of the other nucleotide is also missing one bond. And you know what will happen? They will link together and this linkage between the two is what we call the phosphodiester bond. So in order to find how many nucleotides are present in a phosphodiester, just simply find the connection between the pentose sugar and 
the phosphate group. If we connect several other nucleotides in this example, there will be a common similarity, which is all of them contains the phosphate group and the pentose sugar. This side of a nucleotide is what we call its backbone. And the backbone of a nucleotide are all the same, which is again composed of the phosphate group and the pentose sugar. And they will only differ in terms of their attached nitrogen bases. This blue strip represents the backbone of your nucleic acids, which is again composed of a sugar and a phosphate group. And this sticks sticking out from the backbone are your nitrogen bases. All DNA follows a certain sequence. The sequence is like this. If you have a pyrimidine, it is paired with a purine. Purine, pyrimidine. Purine, pyrimidine. Pyrimidine, purine. So the pairing is always a single ring to a double ring. Now the question is why do we have a pairing between a single and a double rings? The answer is to retain the geometry of a DNA in order for the sugar phosphate backbones, which are this, to have an equal distance to one another. And that culminates this four video mini series about biomolecules. Just keep in mind, these biomolecules are important to us because they keep us in good shape and we need them in order to live. If you want to view the other molecules, the links are in the description box. Happy viewing and see you next time.